Hello and welcome to another very special episode of the Sales Ops Demystified podcast. Today we're joined by Tim Hurst, who's currently the Sales Operations Manager at Funnel and is calling in all the way from Stockholm in Sweden. Tim, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Tom. Hi. Uh, so Tim has an interesting story. He um, started off in sales at, at the previous company, kind of worked his way up specifically within sales development and then has shifted into operations. So my first question, Tim, is to understand how and why you did make that shift, first, I guess, to management, and then also from management into operations. Yeah, certainly. So um, with my previous company, I actually joined on their um, engineering graduate program. Uh, So my previous experience was in physics, um, and I learned towards the end of my degree that physics wasn't what I wanted to continue with. Um, and while I was on that graduate program, um, I got the opportunity to rotate into the sales team and try that out. Um, and very quickly, I found that I was really interested in the psychology of selling and um, really kind of using those selling techniques and giving a very good customer experience. Um, I found that I was a mediocre salesperson, but I was quite good at kind of the sales coaching and learning and development side, um, which enabled me to become a team leader. Um, and then when the opportunity arose, I was able to become a sales development manager. Um, so while I was a sales development manager, um, I really focused on coaching the team and upskilling them. Um, and that got us so far. But then I started to realize we were running into a lot of process challenges um, where I was required to go back and use some of my data analysis skills from my time at university. Um, and then also spend a lot of time collaborating with some of the teams that sales development team collaborated with to build out our handover processes, um, look for gaps, and and really essentially doing sales operations work before I knew what sales operations was. Um, So when uh, I think it was maybe towards about two years in that role, um, I was uh, recommended with the opportunity to join the sales operations team um, at that company. Um, So we had a sales operations team at our head office in Austin, Texas, um, but then they were expanding out to find people in Europe as well to join the team. Uh, So that was a really good opportunity, and that's what brought me into sales operations. Um, After just over a year and a half there, I was um, looking for new opportunities, and I found Funnel, which was really exciting to me because it was a company that was very driven by data. Their product is very data oriented. We're full of very data oriented people. Um, And so that felt very exciting for me. And um, we were kind of just starting the sales operations journey at Funnel when I joined. And so it was a really exciting opportunity to help form that operations department. Help shape the sales operations of the new business. Um, a, A lot of what you just said really makes sense based on previous interviews. Like you 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 have you have the analytical side obviously from physics you mentioned you you have this this passion or this uh liking of the softer side and so it's almost like you're i don't want to say bread but your experience is like almost perfect for sales operations right you have the interesting experience of sales interesting developing people and the analytical skills so it's like you're from what i've heard from previous guests that's like the the sweet mix would you agree um, yeah, I, I I think so. I think my interests have definitely helped me in in this path that I that I'm on down the operations path. Um, and I feel like having that kind of mix in in general um, is really valuable of kind of that data side, problem solving, and communication. Um, I think that can be very powerful in an operations role, and that's something that we look for in kind of other people that we brought into the operations team as well. Sure. Now let's zoom into funnel today. R- roughly, what's the the scale of the the sales team and the scale of the ops team? Um, so the ops team right now we've got four people, um, but that's not specifically to sales ops. We're uh, more commercial operations now, so we cover sales, marketing, and the customer success organization. Um, and then that means that in across sales and customer success, we're supporting about fifty people. Awesome. And are you just looking at the sales team? Um, no. So we've brought in uh, the people that we've got in the team are um, from a very different set of backgrounds. So 
Uh, myself, I come from a more sales background and have uh, experience in sales operations. We have Bruno, who comes from a background in industrial process design and has a lot of experience in agile working practices. Uh, Manuel, who's really into marketing and marketing tech. Um, and then Roya, who's got a very good experience in customer success. So between us, we have a very rounded set of experience, um, but we deliberately haven't siloed ourselves to, for example, just myself supporting sales. So that instead, we can build a very strong baseline of uh, context and understanding in the team and use that cognitive diversity really to help us solve problems in a better way. The dream team. So shout out to Bruno, Manuel and Roya. Um, The current sales tech stack you guys are running, if possible. Sure. So uh, right now we've got HubSpot as our CRM. Um, So we're really mainly working through there. Uh, We have Gong as a really powerful tool for uh, recording calls, and we use that a lot for coaching and then um, kind of analyzing some of the the key themes that we're talking about in our sales conversations. Um, And then for dashboarding, we use Looker. And actually, we make use of our own app as well in between, uh, particularly for our marketing data. uh, We're able to kind of integrate our HubSpot CRM data with our marketing and ad data and then bring that through together through to Looker. Got it. Makes total sense. Can you share something? And it would, it would actually be quite interesting to understand or, or to broaden this question out, not just to sales, but also to marketing and success. Something that you guys have done as a team that has had a big impact on the productivity of any of those three teams. Yeah. So I think one of the the biggest things that we've been working on, there's, there's probably two big ones that we've been supporting so far. Uh, so one of those is um, building, again, a very similar uh, kind of coaching program within the sales team. Uh, so really kind of building up that mindset around learning and coaching um, to help help people kind of take that really good sales knowledge that's in some people's heads and really help people learn from each other. Um, and then another big piece we've been working on is helping the uh, the whole commercial team learn from agile working methodologies that can help benefit them day to day. Over the past few weeks, we've spoken to a hundred sales leaders around the world to understand the impact of COVID-19 on revenue. And we've combined these insights into one single report that covers the immediate impact, the commercial outlook, the tech stack that you need, and actionable advice for sales leaders. You can claim this whole report completely for free if you go to ebster.com forward slash COVID. That's ebster.com forward slash COVID. Totally agree. Like the getting the, like having the knowledge in one person's, in one salesperson's head is great because they're going to be really good. But then there's a massive benefit from like bringing that out of the head and storing it elsewhere. So even if they leave, then other people can obviously take that on. Um, more recently with, with the virus, I assume you guys have been working more remotely. Has that, change the way you work with the reps? Are you doing anything different to ensure a smooth transition to more remote work? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think in some ways we were well positioned uh, for transitioning to working more remotely. Uh, Funnel has two offices, uh, one in Boston, one in Stockholm. And so we were working remotely, mostly with the Boston team anyway. Um, I think through having everybody work remotely, it's helped us a little bit understand more the plight of the Boston team of always being remote. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of helped us see areas where we need to improve as well. Um, I think with the operations team, we tried to look at it as an opportunity to improve the way that we collaborate, um, kind of challenge some of the, the ways we had been doing things um, and look for new ways to collaborate remotely. Um, I think because at Funnel, we have a very strong culture of experimentation, we were able to very quickly try out a lot of different things and different teams found very quickly what works for them. Um, And so we've now got quite a good workflow, really, from working remotely, Um, and particularly even around that sales coaching, the fact that we have Gong to record the conversations, we can listen back to them. Um, That's been working really well. And actually, I've had feedback from some of the sellers that because they're now in a video call when they're coaching, they actually find it even better to be really focused and kind of not distracted by other things that are happening around them. 
For sure. It's so interesting. If this whole virus thing happened five to 10 years ago, I, it seems like the impact would have been significantly more on, on sales teams, but on all work, right? Because now we have this, this amazing array of software to help this help us work and collaborate together, regardless of whether we're in the same place or not. Yeah, certainly. And there's so many different and new tools as well coming out all the time at the moment that just weren't around, yeah, five, 10 years ago mm. at all. Do you think any of the, the changes or different ways of working that you guys are doing now because of the virus will sustain and the way the funnel works or the funnel sales team works will change forever going forward? I think there's there's definitely some things that I think are going to stick. Um, I think using uh, tools like Google Jamboard and other virtual whiteboards has now become very uh, core to our work process, both in our developer team and in our commercial team. Um, so I think that's something that will help us in future to have remote workshops and definitely to work across our offices in a much more effective way. Uh, we won't need to fly anymore to come and solve a problem together in the same room. Um, I think we were already using video conferencing quite a lot beforehand, um, mostly to speak to our clients and prospects. But I think now we're going to be doing that more internally as well. Um, and then, yeah, I think because we've been doing uh, a lot of work, as I said, on thinking about agile working methodologies and how they can benefit a commercial team rather than just a developer team, that's brought in a lot of working practices that have also really helped us through this time, such as having a daily stand-up with the team, um, having retrospectives to reflect on how we've progressed. And what we've been doing in most of our teams uh, is having very regular retrospectives almost daily so that we have these kind of touch points at the start and end of a day, um, but also making sure that they're not super rigid so we can also fill in for some of that coffee break time that we're missing at the moment while we're not being in office. So I think a lot of these things have been really beneficial while we've been working from home, but I, I think a lot of them, again, are going to be beneficial when we're back in the office. Sure. Um, now looking at the forecasting process, how hmm. does that currently work at Funnel? Um, so at the moment, we're really running from a uh, seller-level forecast that we roll up, so really calling individual deals out that we can then uh, forecast on. I got it. So we, there's a very bottom-up approach, I think that's called, right? Where Yeah. Got it. So you'll be working with the individual reps and I guess the managers to understand what they have in the pipeline and then you would be responsible for rolling that up and then showing it to the leadership. Yes, exactly. And then um, at the same time, we're also reviewing the pipeline as well uh, so that we can see what we you know, start to predict based on how many open deals we've got for next month and the months after, et cetera, so that we can start to see where we may need to kind of increase our lead volume um, and things like that. So we're, we're presenting a very core forecast from the, the bottom up and then also just looking at the top level of the pipeline to see if there's anything we need to change ahead of time. Got it. I have a question about that. When working with reps to try and get their, their commit number, do you like? Do you take what they're saying as like gospel, or do you have a way of working to to try and understand? I don't. I don't say the reps would be misrepresenting, but they they might not be. They might not have a clear picture. Like, do you, do you have any process for trying to dig down into what is actually happening? Um, so, not on a individual rep level or on a forecast level, but generally we are keeping track of statistics on a, a, a longer term. Uh, so that we can start to see what patterns are happening. Is um, a certain team, uh, you know, do they have a different process at a certain stage of the deal, which means that their conversion rate increases. Uh, so we're trying to keep track on those so we can see, again, kind of where certain behaviors are really working for one team and maybe not behaviors might not be working as well for another. So that, again, we can try and build up that baseline and get everybody doing the things in a way that works for them. Um, but on the forecast level itself, we're not applying any extra corrections right now. Got it. Penultimate question. If you could only measure one sales metric for the rest of your career, which would you choose? <laughs> um, I think that's a really, a really difficult question. Um, I think it depends on the question that you're asking. <laughs> I think um, each metric can only go so far as, as to what the question is. Um, 
And so it's quite difficult, I think, to pick just one it, uh, that could be a be all and end all. Okay, so we're, we're abstaining from the question. It's not possible. I, yeah. I totally agree. Because, yeah, for sure, having one metric it might not actually add that much value because in isolation, it, it's not really going to help you make any decisions that's going to improve the process. I, I think that's exactly it. it. It depends whether you're looking to look historically. Maybe we might be interested in our win rate or our dollars throughput in the pipeline. If we're looking for what are we going to achieve next month or next quarter, then we might want to look at our uh, kind of our, our new lead rate or our, our new deal creation rates, and then the amount in created new deals, etc. And so it really depends on the the question and then the limitations of each individual metric as well. So what else is influencing that metric? So I, I think it's more important to think about the the question and the the metrics ability to answer than any given metric itself. Makes sense. Answering a question with a question, very, very political. Uh, Tim, <laughs> final question. Who has influenced you or inspired you the most in sales operations? Um, so I think it would probably be all of my uh, previous managers in uh, my previous role while I was uh, managing the sales development team um, and then also while I was in operations previously. Uh, they weren't all sales operations people, but they definitely had that kind of sales operations mindset. Um, and I think really set me on that path to where I am now today. Got it. Awesome. Well, two things I picked out and I really agree. I think it's super valuable for any sales of people to try it. Our sales managers and operations is try and not have all of the information in the salesperson's head and, and try to work with the reps to pull out best practices and then document them so that can be spread around to everybody. And then also your mindset about the, the virus and the working situation with the virus. You, you said it was an opportunity to improve, which I think is really healthy to look at what you guys can do differently whilst working remotely and see if there's anything that can be adopted to make the team and the reps more efficient going forward. Tim? Thank you for coming on. Thank you very much, Tom.